Hello Booktube, today I'm going to be doing the nonfiction journey tag. This tag is the creation of Hannah of Hannah's books, and she was inspired by the creators of the Shakespeare journey tag, um, who were the hosts of um, Shaketimber, and also the spinoff um, Victorian journey tag, which was created by I'm skeletoning about the books, and I'm blinking on um, the other co-adapter of that one. Um, so the nonfiction journey tag is a set of prompts that um, looks that explores our journey through nonfiction. So let's get going. What was your first experience reading nonfiction? Um, I want to say it was a book about the planets, or it could have been a short, short biography of Macaulay Culkin um, that I picked up uh, from one of those scholastic um, catalogs. Um, if you are American um, and you went through the U.S. public school system, uh, you will remember from about the start of your schooling, whether it was kindergarten or pre-K, up through um, probably about fifth grade, maybe sixth, depending. Um, like every few months, you would get a little catalog of books from Scholastic. Um, and... Me, like my family, we got um, every time those catalogs come out, we'd get something. And some of those books I remember having been nonfiction. But it has been so long that I don't recall the details, the specifics. But I'm pretty sure I did pick up some nonfiction with those. And so those are my earliest memories, just not super clear. Has prompt number two. Has the reading of a work of nonfiction ever brought you to tears? No. Um, very few uh, works of literature have ever brought me to tears. And I don't think nonfiction it was ever one of them. Uh, prompt number three. Are there any people who have played a significant role in your nonfiction journey? No. I never had that one teacher. Or that one mentor who really did anything for me, but not never really inculcated a love of nonfiction. I came to that on my own. Prompt number four. Do you enjoy documentaries? Do you have a favorite? Is there a subject you'd like to see discussed on film? That is, should Ken Burns or that is, what should Ken Burns film next? Okay, yeah, I do like documentaries. I haven't really watched many lately. Uh, most of my viewing is largely devoted to BookTube. I really need to um, watch uh, PBS now that finally um, we do have PBS again. Um... So, when PBS has a ton of um, documentaries series. So, uh, about four years ago, or more like ten years ago, um, there was a PBS station um, based in Waco, which shut down because it was... it. The viewing market had two PBS stations, one in Waco and then one in Temple. And the market's not big enough for both of them. So the um, Waco one that was affiliated with um, Baylor University um, folded. Although the um, NPR station, I think, still survives. But the channel itself... Um, went under. And then a few years later, in about 2019, 
um, Temple College, um, who kind of oversaw the PBS station out of Temple, uh, decided to fold it for some odd reason. I think um, that particular program was going in a different direction, so um, they decided to fold um, that one in. Eventually, uh, that PBS station got bought by um, the CBS affiliate to put the CW on. So, effectively, for a while, there wasn't a PBS station, although the cable channels, I think, either went with the one out of um, Bryan College Station or the one out of Austin. But we don't have... Um, traditional cable I mean we get their internet service but um, the television channels we actually use Hulu and for a while Hulu did not provide a PBS station but uh, recently we've noticed that they have expanded to include both um, Camu the one out of the PBS station out of College Station and um, KLRE which is the one out of Austin so we have PBS so now I just need to watch it. Um, or friends not having to watch it. Um, and they have, and they had some great documentaries. Um, also, I need to really look at what um, Netflix has and Amazon Prime, and also uh, Disney Plus, which I have and I don't really use. Um, but yeah, I've watched and really enjoyed a lot of documentaries. Um, my favorite subjects are history, primarily the ancient world. Um, now, is there a subject I'd like to see discussed on film? It would not be one that Ken Burns would make a documentary up because Ken Burns primarily focuses on American history and I really would be more interested in um, another documentary about the Hittites or Maria Teresa. Um, prompt number five. Have you read a biography about or memoir of a person with whom you identify? Not really. Prompt number six. Read aloud a short passage you love from a work of nonfiction. Um, I don't have a work of nonfiction to hand um, right now, so I'll skip that one. Prompt number seven. Do any works of nonfiction intimidate you? Which ones and why? Well, you know, yes. Um, for a change, yes, there are some works of nonfiction that intimidate me. Uh, really long ones, um, particularly ones that are very dense and um, academic, can intimidate me. Um, I'm currently right now looking at the Soviet century, and it is rather intimidating. Also, given that I've um, like, I'm not entirely sure if it's just um, because I recently bailed on or bailed again on a Collapse by Vladislav M. Zubok, which was about the fall of the Soviet Union. And I'm not entirely sure if it was just I don't connect with that book or I'm not all that interested in Soviet history. So that one's a bit intimidating. Um... There's also a really big one on the American Empire that I've had for a few years now, and I, it's intimidating. Um, and also probably this new book, um, The New Roman Empire by Anthony Caldellas, uh, that I'm, I've been circling for a few weeks now. Um, I am interested in the Byzantine Empire, although I haven't really gotten on with Caldellas' writing, and it is over a thousand pages, so I don't know. I've heard recommendations for it, but 
it's also a thousand pages in $45. Um, prompt number eight. What tips would you give to people hesitant to read nonfiction? I would recommend you start small and popular, um, but also in subjects that you're already interested in. So if you're like, uh, interested in animals, maybe try out the Reaction Animal series, although some of those can be pretty horrific. I'm thinking of spider. Um, but um, yeah, just start small in what your interests are. Um, and maybe talk to people who are interested in what you're interested in. Prompt number nine. What are your favorite works of nonfiction? I have quite a lot. Um, so um, looking at my history wall, which pretty much all of this is going to be, there's a Weaver, Scraps, and Kings by Amanda H. Padani. It is a wonderful history of the ancient Near East. Also, a big, wonderful thing by Stephen Harrigan. It is a gigantic history of Texas that is phenomenal. Um, World Beneath the Sands by Toby Wilkinson, which is about um, the Egyptology from the 18th century up through the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun. Um, uh, Three Queens by, no, Young Queens by Leah Redmond Chang. That one is wonderful. Um, Bismarck's War by uh, Rachel Crastill. Um, it is phenomenal. The best um, history of the Franco-Prussian War that I've read. I absolutely adore it. Uh, King of the World by Philip Mansell. It's a really good biography of Louis XIV. Maria Theresa by Barbara Stolberg Rillinger is great. And Last King of America by Andrew Robinson is really good. And Age of Decadence by um, Simon Heffer. And I could go on and on and on. Um, and finally, question number 10, or this case prompt number 10, I tag other booktubers. So if you'd like to do this tag, consider yourselves tagged. And I will be back tomorrow with either another tag video or maybe finally an original tag of my own. So until then, booktube, thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.